Huh? All right, so welcome to Sorry. Night Hacking at the Javaland Conference. We are doing the JCP update interview with Heather yes. Vancura, and um, we're going to learn what's new in the JCP. Why is that All funny? All right, so what's new? <laughs> Why is that funny? What's new in the JCP? I don't know. It is funny. Oh. Okay, well, we have gotten lots of new JSRs in the last six months to start with. Okay, I interviewed Andre yesterday. He was talking about the new desktop embedded JSR, which I forget the number of already. 377, Andres is leading that one, desktop, desktop embedded application API. And uh, we have gotten several new Java EE8 JSRs that are just getting started. So cool. those are ramping up, expert groups forming, uh, lots of activity around adopt a JSR with Java user groups around the world getting more involved to make it more uh, community participation into the platform evolution. So that's encouraging to see. And some of the Java SE 9 JSRs are also starting to get filed, cool. but those are a little bit further behind. So um, only are those, one. Only are those one derivative so from JEPS or are they entirely well, the, distinct? There's one uh, JSR for Java SE 9 that got filed so far, and that's um, JSR 376, the Java, Java module platform. Okay. And that, so that's uh, Mark's baby. Yes, and that has four JEPs uh, that are listed in the JSR, so they're part of it. So, yes, each each JSR has several JEPs that will be part of it. So okay, that that'll be sense. coming soon. More more Java SE nine JSRs coming soon. Lots of Java EE eight, 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 eight JSR. ones already in there. Yes, already filed. Most of them getting started. So they're working towards their early draft reviews. You can check those out. And then we also have a JCP.next JSR that was filed last year in 2014. So yeah, we're ready so to that, finish one, that one. That one's exciting. That's going to be big changes to the community process. Um, well, it's not the big changes in terms of the change to the agreement, the JSPA. That's uh, JSR 358, uh, which is the major change to the Java community process where we're going to change the legal agreement and the intellectual property and that kind of thing. But we started a new one kind of as a spin-off from JSR 358 last year, which is making some pretty significant changes to the membership. So we're introducing new membership categories. Okay. And we'll have some new agreements. So the, the title of that is um, Broadening JCP Membership. So what we did is we looked at it from the perspective of how can we encourage more participation from different groups of developers that weren't able to fully participate and engage with the, within the current structure. So what changes can we make without changing the JSPA since that takes a longer amount of time Got given it. that the lawyers can involve. So, so is this change. phase two or three out of? Well, this would be jcp.next.4. Okay, phase four. It's phase four of jcp.next. Okay. And we hope to finish it this year. It's JSR 364. It's in cool. public review now. So we'll introduce um, two new categories of membership. We'll have a new membership level for individuals okay. called an associate member. So if individual Java developers want to join, they can sign a one-page agreement. Nice. It's more like a contributor agreement. So something you can actually read and understand. Yes, so it's one pager, <laughs> and that's currently available in the public review. Doesn't require an employee employer signature like the JSPA does if you if you're an individual and wants to join now. And so individuals will be able to be, join JSRs as contributors. Nice. So we'll officially recognize people who are contributing to JSRs versus they can contribute any way they want now through the JCP transparency initiatives and the, the previous changes that we made. But this is a way of formally recognizing them. They, they sign up to be a member as an associate member and then nominate themselves to be contributors on any expert group that they're interested in and then officially help the spec lead and the expert group in their work and you know receive that recognition that will be on jcp.org. Cool. So that'll be cool. Okay. And then also membership level for JUGS. So currently, uh, Java user groups yeah. join the same way that corporations so, yeah, I, join. I um, registered my Silicon Valley JavaFX user group as a yes. JCP member, and that yeah. was a lot of paperwork. Yeah, so it's 11 pages. <laughs> so now a Java user groups will have a different agreement. It's a partner agreement. It'll be partner membership. So it's, a, another, again, a one-page agreement. Nice. So easier for Java user very groups good. to join. Very good. So once that completes, it'll be very easy for individuals 
and Java user groups to join the JCP as contributors. Yes, well, and also for corporations, we're making it easier for them as well because we will officially eliminate any fees to oh, join the okay. JCP. Very nice. So we've seen over time that that can be a barrier as well. So no more fees for anyone. So free for corporations, free for nonprofits, free for individuals, and free for Java user groups. Cool. When do you expect the JSR to be complete, go in effect? Well, we expect that we'll have proposed final draft in May and final in June. And then we'll have to implement the changes. We're hoping to have it uh, electronic signatures online. Uh, so it might take a couple months after June before we'll start seeing the members join. Cool. So, yeah. All right, cool. It's an exciting update. Thanks very Bye. much for taking the time out of the Java Land experience. Taking time away from you. the roller coasters and parties and all the fun you're having here. All the fun stuff <laughs> in the hacker garden. Exactly. Yes. Um, yeah, and I'll, I'll see you, maybe I'll even see you like, you know, not in a foreign country for a change. I'll see you in the Bay Area <laughs> next time. Exactly. All right, thanks. All right, thanks for